Uh, good morning uh, to you both. Uh, Michael, maybe we start with uh, the macro side of things. Uh, clearly, markets have, uh, have, have kind of been excited in January, or at least ca caught a lot of people too defensive. Uh, return to risk, people thinking the Fed's almost done at the time the economy is in a little bit of a, a firm patch, I guess you might call it. Uh, do you differ with, uh, with the market's view of how things are going to go, the Fed almost being done, and the economy going to escape recession? Yeah, yeah, we actually do have a very different view. I mean, we came into the year the exact opposite of uh, how the market's playing out right now. We like defensives, you know, healthcare, um, you know, staples, utilities, high quality dividend payers, long term treasuries. And that's on the back of the fact that, listen, the story is not about the Fed. You know, everybody wants to focus on whether the Fed is done, whether they're going to pause, whether they're going, going to do 25 basis points more, but, but they're not seeing the forest through the trees. The fact of the matter is, is why will the Fed stop? Why will the Fed slow down hikes? And the reason is because the economy is clearly slowing, right? And a poor economy, one that's starting to lose its momentum, coupled with an earnings recession that's starting right now, tends not to be good for cyclical equities and for credit markets. And so I think this is, listen, you always get a January effect. You always get a January rally. This year, it's even going to be more exaggerated because of what's going on with central bank policy. But we think really uh, the market is, is, is not keeping their eye on the ball. Well, I mean, Michael, just to follow up there quickly, I mean, no, everyone agrees that there's parts of the economy slowing pretty severely, but just not really falling apart yet. And it's the softer indicators and obviously, granted, some of the leading indicators of inflation that are the weakest as opposed to employment, as opposed to some spending areas uh, and things like that. Sure. But if you look at durable goods, you look at ISM new orders, um, you know, you look at PMI data, both regional as well as national, all of it suggests we are you know, if not already in contraction, at the cusp of contraction. The labor market is really the thing that's the strongest part of the economy. But look to every single recession or slowdown in history, and labor is always the last to crack. This is not unique. And so as we go further throughout the year, as you have the earnings recession start to take hold and you see layoffs expand past just the technology sector, what are you going to be left with? You're going to be left with a consumer that has drawn down all of their pandemic excess savings that has levered their balance sheet through credit card debt, that still has to deal with reasonably high inflation, and is now going to start experiencing layoffs, that's a terrible, terrible backdrop for the consumer later in the year. It's just that the market today, despite being forward-looking, isn't really looking at that yet. And I think that's where they've got it wrong. Well, Sylvia, um, NASDAQ up 11% in just a uh, month to date here. Uh, clearly, those many of the stocks, many of the kind of higher growth areas of the market peaked almost two years ago. The Nasdaq peaked, you know, 14 months ago or something like that. So I guess the big question is what got priced in coming into this year and where would you look uh, to be positioned uh, within the market right now? Yeah, great question, Mike. I think that, you know, the tech stocks have actually suffered a bit of their own rolling recession. So you've seen some of those names come down 30 to 50 percent off of their 52 week highs. And, you know, while Michael made some great points about perhaps choppiness ahead of us in terms of, you know, what the Fed does, how they stay higher for longer and consumer, you know, pricing power, buying power, things like that. I think that tech is actually what's going to power the economy for the next decade. And you think if you think about all of these new innovations that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks, like open AI, for example, you know, that is just going to change the way that companies operate, replace the workers that have been laid off and you know, jobs that can't be filled at places like Microsoft and Amazon. You know, I, I think for investors that can stay invested beyond 2024, tech is a really good place to look. The valuations have come down quite a lot. You know, earnings are, are OK. They're not sort of, you know, crushing it and getting major price benefits from that. And I think that you can kind of get some value creation here by buying at these lower prices in the major tech firms.